we are going to move on. We're going to do a little recap of episode 34, Table for Two, part two. This is when Malia and Chan arrive at the restaurant and um, they're having a nice little time, you know, by the water and Chan just feels so romantic and he wants to give Malia a nice piece of jewelry. So he busts out with a, a Tiffany's box and it's a nice little locket and Malia opens up the locket and sees a picture of his face stuffed in there. And she's like, oh. um, come to find out later on, um, it's not just a locket with his face on it. He actually has a GPS tracker on it. So in Chan's mind, he's trying to rationalize him protecting his investment from being abducted by somebody, but it's a little on the eerie side, but um, they're having a nice little, you know, conversation, a little cute little banter going back and forth. They take a little walk and he keeps calling her his girl. And she's like, no, sir, you, you have to make some formal declarations of your love for me. And Chan just acts like a whole animal and just, you know, makes a spectacle of himself in a positive way, but it was still a spectacle. Um, toward the end of their interaction and hugging and kissing and having fun, Chan spots somebody <laughs> with a bike fighting the air. And it was nobody other than um, Chris. Chris has been following Malia. We've been talking about she was stalked. You know, um, he showed up at her at her condo, broke the vase and screamed, called her the B word and ran off. Um, he showed up on the day of her graduation, made a scene. All these people are walking over him like, sir, it's going to be OK. Just no, he's mad. She said, I don't want your chocolate. I don't want your flowers. Like, please just keep it pushing, sir. He don't want to hear that. So he was upset and he acted a fool. So this is uh, part three of him seeing Malia. And Chan notices, wow, that guy was really angry over there in that corner. And it's very alarming to him because he's thinking, no, he's no, he got security who's following him. And I guess nobody was thinking to look for a man in a, on a bike. So, and we're not talking about something that requires gasoline. We're talking about, honey, pedal and foot, baby. He was getting all that action. So that's pretty much um, table for two, um, part two. That's the sum of that. What were y'all's thoughts on chapter 34? Well, well, well. Um, although it was a bit much, it, it was quite alarming, the GPS and the locket. I still think it was sweet. Like, Chan really cares. Like, he really wants to protect, you know, Malia. And I was just... <laughs> And I was just like, you know, if my husband gave me something and I found out there was a GPS, I'm like, I wouldn't be too upset. I mean, I would think it was really sweet. I'd be like, um, okay, but I mean, I, I, I could have that conversation too, you know, like, hey, how do you feel about this? Okay, you know, if I go out and, you know, we got to be safe out here so you know where I am, I don't mind it, you know, but I, 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 I thought it was a really sweet scene. It was a really sweet gesture, um, you know, so uh, yeah. Um, I'll get, I'll save my other comments for the questions. <laughs> Alicia. I'm just blown away. You're like, if my husband wanted to put a GPS tracker on me, I'd be okay. What? <laughs> and the fact that she's like, and we'll have that discussion. No, ma'am. He put that on you secretly. You don't know about it. Like there is no discussion as to, well, okay. So how about from 10 to 12 you could you can turn it on you can monitor me but i mean after 12 i need my private time no, you're gonna end up in somebody's trunk and i'm gonna say that every single time you're gonna end up in somebody's trunk oh i think it's sweet i thought the whole thing was creepy and um i laughed about it you know um i just <laughs> picture like being on a date and this guy gives me this beautiful locket you know what a locket you put something sentimental in it you know, your parents, your grandmother, your kids, you open the locket and is this nigga? I'm like, I mean, you cute, but damn, really? Like, we there? Like, wow, you took that upon yourself. You didn't even let me choose the picture I want to put in there. And then to top it all off, behind his picture is a little GPS tracker so he can continue his his stalking, his high-tech stalking. Um. Yeah, it that, it was a bit much. I was like, wow, Chan is really on one. I didn't think it was romantic. If anything, that that kind of killed it. You know, he took her to this beautiful restaurant. They looking at the water. They talking about the water, you know, 
bashing off the rocks or whatever, like glitter and everything's pretty. And she had to wear her sunglasses because the reflection was so bright. I mean, it was just set. You know, he's smelling good. She looking good. Everybody all good. And you gonna hand me basically my uh my chain. You know how them slaves had to chain, you know, like with they neck and <laughs> well, I don't know what it's called, but yeah, you gonna hand me my chain, um, get, so you can keep track of me. Nah, I I don't know. As soon as I open the locket, now it would have been nice about it, I guess. Um, she didn't know there was a tracker in it. I think she it would have been a whole nother conversation if she saw like something blinking. Um, but, <laughs> but she, yeah, I would have opened it and I would have been, oh, thank you. Okay, somebody's feeling themselves. Like, and I know he took like a model pic. You know, I sent Karina a gif of this guy looking all serious, like, like look, perfect pose. You know, he's not going to put one, you know, where it looked like somebody caught him off guard. He's looking, you know, he's smiling and looking happy. It's going to be something like dramatic as hell every time she opened that thing. And, oh, and she can't get it off. Isn't that some shit? I'm like, and it's probably like silver. Like, what if she want to wear gold that day? Like, she going to have all type of shit clashing. Like, she's stuck. And imagine when she tried to take that shit off. Like that shit ain't coming off? No, bruh. No. He would he should have got her like a little anklet or something. You know, like a little cute ankle monitor or some shit if he's gonna be tracking her like that. But anyways, that's my thoughts. He uh, it wasn't romantic and Chan is wildin'. He is wildin', bruh. <laughs> he is wildin'. So again, I'm gonna sound like a broken record. I haven't read this in a long time because I'm working on other things, right? So I'm reading and I'm just like, oh, because I don't know. It always, Rose City, when I read the chapters, so I always read them usually the, the night before we film to make sure that I'm fresh. Um, I just heard a weird noise upstairs and I'm like, ain't nobody here. I guess just me and the cats, but ain't bet nobody else be up in here. But anyway, um, so I read it the night before to like, you know, make sure that I'm fresh for it. So I'm reading and everything's good and I'm like, ooh. Tiffany's box and that was like the locket and when I saw when it was like his face with a picture I literally lost it I started screaming I was like oh my god so I was shocked too I had totally forgot about that those are like the little small details of the story because like I, I I remember like the main plot right but all those little small details I just started cracking up and then I kept reading on it was like okay a GPS and I was like oh my god like what was I thinking when we was writing this like you know I you know I guess trying to do the most I, I shocked myself you know and then to read that now she can't get the necklace off and he didn't put I was like okay okay you know what at some point you just gotta stay when is enough enough because at this point I'm like I, mean, I get it Chris is following her and he could be dangerous right but there's other ways to deal with dangerous people, like a restraining order, um, a bodyguard. He he put something on her that she can't even take off. Yeah, tie him up a little bit, right? Like, but you're saying that this woman can't even. So I'm gonna go home and be like, Eva, um, um, Wendy, have you ever seen a lock like this? Girl, it won't come off. You know, I'm just like, could you imagine trying to get that off? And he's like. Uh. Well, let me see, you know, uh, I think it's stuck. Let me take you into somebody, you know, like, sir, nobody, no, like, it's it's too much. It's too much. And I understand he wants to protect her, but you do have to understand one thing, you're not God. And um, I think that men and this whole idea of like, you know, he has to protect her, he's got to keep her. You, you have to do what you can do. So I would expect if we were out in public and something happens, you know, you would try to protect me, not run, which some of these people might. Um, <laughs> I'd probably be the one out there getting down, you know what I'm saying? But um, no, so that's a different story. But this whole notion of like, I have to be in control of everything, it starts to put you in the center of, of, a, of a very dangerous position where now you think you're God. And when you think you're God, you start making decisions and choices about who should be here and who should not be here. And maybe you should be here in this capacity and not in that capacity. And that can get very, very dangerous. I'm scared of any man who wants to do too much. Just do what's normal. Just just do what I ask. Don't do anything extra because I don't know how far this will go. Right now, it's like, let's be honest, because Chan fine as hell is like, okay, well, he'll give her that little locket with that GP. You want to track me, right? But if he was somebody like Chris and be like, I got you this, <laughs> you know, you'd be like, this is, this is too much. I'm calling the cops. Like, you would, it 
it would it would it would feel so different because you don't like him, but when you like him, like I can just look past a little of that toxicity. I'm not looking past it because at this point, I'm becoming a hostage in a relationship with you. So what else are you gonna do if you're already tracking me? And I mean, like. Yeah, I would have a big problem if he's going to talk about he's tracking me, which I wouldn't put it past him to do that because he just seems like that kind of person who would be like, I don't know how this got on your phone. Like, he strikes me as somebody like that, right? I would be very offended. You know why? Because there's no reason for it. I'm, I stay at home 24 hours a day, seven days a week by choice. Okay? You don't need to be, you know, checking on what I'm doing. If I say I went to Target, that's where I was at. And I don't need to be questioned, well, the mileage on the car, well, who are you? Who are you? Because I'm going to tell you, I might have wanted to stop by at um, Dutch Brothers and get a drink. It's none of your business. Let people live. Because I'm going to tell you, the, the people who have the most controlling issues and they got to know where you're at and everything has to add up and it only takes 10 minutes to go in the store and get all these things, they're hiding shit. That's what I've learned. I've learned the people who want to do all these things. There's a reason you are hiding stuff. Just like Chan, he's hiding stuff. Because regular people don't think like this. But people who have a lot to hide and they look at you as a piece of property and not as a human being who has the right to make their own choices, they're hiding crap and they'll treat you like you're a zoo pet. So yeah, I got a big problem. Play with me if you want to. All this will be over. Mm -hmm.